So it seems like every single election cycle, there's at least one prominent Democratic Party lawmaker who gets successfully primaried by an insurgent progressive leftist. And, you know, members of the Democratic Party establishment, they see what's happening. They know that the writing is on the wall. They know that there is growing sentiment to actually take bold action when it comes to policy. So what they're doing is they're continuing to push back against the prospect of primary challenges. And they're basically creating a sort of defense force for incumbent Democrats in the event they face a primary challenge come 2022 and 2024. And the individual who is leading the charge, or one of them at least, is Hakeem Jeffries, the individual who is next in line to be Speaker of the House. So for more on this, we go to Leanne Caldwell of NBC News, who explains three senior House Democrats have launched a new political group to defend incumbents facing primary challenges, according to the group's founders. The political action committee called Team Blue will fill a gap for members running for re-election who might not be able to get help from the official committees of the Democratic Party to fend off primary challenges. Democrats aren't taking any risks ahead of a difficult round of midterm elections as they try to hold on to their slim four-seat majority in the House. Historically, the party of the president has lost seats in Congress in the midterm election. Those losses could be made worse by tumultuous primary challenges. Disagree with that. Some of those primary challengers enjoy well-funded support from outside groups, just as Democrats encourage to change left-wing groups that enjoy support from well-known members like Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez have been unafraid to pump money into races to oust Democratic incumbents. Adding to the risk for incumbents is the coming redistricting process when incumbent Democrats will find themselves making the case to new constituencies or possibly merged into a district with another member. The PAC is being established by three rising stars in the House Democratic Caucus, Representatives Hakeem Jeffries of New York, Joss Gothheimer of New Jersey, and Terry Sewell of Alabama. Now, the idea promoted in this article that you know, if there's this really tumultuous and possibly divisive primary challenge that's going to make the individual who prevails victorious weaker is nonsensical. I think that this is cause for a really strong and robust primary process where you actually put up the strongest candidate. But that's just, if you ask me, somebody who believes in democracy. And, you know, this is all funny to me because... Democrats always scream at the top of their lungs about unity, and they rightfully speak to the extremism of the GOP. But I mean, if that's the case, wouldn't the priority here be to fund Democrats after they win their primaries? I mean, this is what you say to justice Democrats. You say, well, look, why would you be funding these, you know, uh, primary opponents to incumbent Democrats when we should be supporting the strongest Democrat in the end over the Republican? But it's funny how, like, they're not taking their own advice. And that's fine. Like, do what you need to do. But then when push comes to shove, don't scream about unity if you're going to be doing the same thing that you claim is leading to disunity in the Democratic Party primary. And look, there is a civil war in the Democratic Party primary. That is a thing, and it needs to play out, and it needs to be solved organically and democratically. Uh, but what we've seen is that the individuals who have power, have institutional advantages, incumbents, they try to make it easier for the incumbent to win already. So it's not necessarily like you need the funding, because if you are an incumbent Democrat and you're like one of these establishment figures, you get millions and millions of dollars from special interests. I mean, I brought on probably over 30 candidates in the last cycle in 2020. And each time, every single candidate I spoke with, they were outmatched like 10 to 20 to 1 uh, against the incumbent, right? So there's already this advantage. It's not like Justice Democrats and Courage to Change Pack together are going to be this fundraising behemoth. They're going to help some primary challengers, I'm assuming. But to the extent that they're going to all of a sudden like be behemoths is is absurd like it doesn't matter what the district is that we're talking about here there's going to be an advantage already built in for the incumbents and to me this is super disingenuous because they're basically trying to scream victim here oh my god we're being targeted by these outside groups and we're already you know fending off gerrymandering and we're gonna have to make our case in new uh districts possibly with new constituents so you know th this is all just too much for us no if anything, now is the time when you should actually be expanding the primary process. And I think that every single uh, incumbent Democrat 
should have a primary uh, just every single election cycle. And yes, I'm inconsistent. That includes people who I support. All of the squad should have primary challengers because I'm confident that they would win because they actually are trying to do a good job representing you know their constituents, even if a lot of times they falter and I disagree with them strategically. But look... Um, you know, there's not much left to be said about this. This is entirely predictable, and this super PAC isn't going to be the only super PAC that's trying to stop progressive primary challengers from being successful. Uh, but let them, uh, you know, to me, I think that what's going to amount to a victory for progressives is if they have a really, really strong ground game. Because money, yes, that does make a difference nine times out of ten. But, you know, it's been proven now with Corey Bush, with Marie Newman, with AOC, that if you have a really strong ground game, you put in the time and the effort and get to know people in that district, build up really strong bonds within your community— you can win regardless of the you know monetary advantage that your opponent has and uh we'll leave that there